Before I uh, go any further, I just want to uh, ask if the Flat Earth people could please um, refrain from giving me a thumbs down for um, seeing, you know, space. And I think where you want to really be your best place, I know you're looking for mud fossils, and that's fine. Everybody's got mud fossils, they're all over the place. Wise Up is a guy that does mud fossils, and there's another one, Jay's, um, Jay Dreamer Z, something like that. Um, they do mud fossils. Michael Tellinger now is doing mud fossils. So if you're, and they're all flat earth people, so, uh, but I don't mix my stuff with flat earth, so I'm very extremely sorry that I don't see a flat earth. I don't see it. And I'm, you know, I don't think it's fair to keep attacking me and thumb down my other research for that way I see the earth. So, uh, you know, after six years, it's, um, it is getting old, and um, I, I would appreciate it if you'd go to, to those places. They have mud fossils. There's no reason for you to come to my site and, and, and discredit everything I say. I don't have to bother them. All right? Thank you. Roger once again at the edge of the galaxy. Now, let's say we are out here somewhere in a far region of our Milky Way galaxy which is spinning and we are spinning along with it so our Sun is going all the way around the galaxy when it does it drags the planets with it so let's take a look at that but before we do that you can see the separations of of matter and regions between them which I am going to claim are regions of ether and the entire universe is filled with ether and there are clusters of ether surrounding the most luminous parts because they emit the ether. Now there's normally a black hole at the center here which is spinning and consuming and as it does it compresses literally crushes by wrapping this into the ether and matter forcing it into the black hole and accelerating it very similar to a uh, a dancer or a, uh, a, a ice skater. Now, so we're way out here. We are rocket shipping around this thing very fast because one spin here, we have to do the whole thing. All right, now, as we drag our planets along with us, we will be crushing ourselves into the ether which is opposing our forward movement because they are nothing more than electrons which are light holding us back magnetically with negative particles like balloons and those negative particles surround I mean the negative particle is surrounded by a region which it, it's supposed to own and when any other particles come at it they oppose them and therefore a planet or a solar system coming against any ether which is here it's it's moving with the the flow here to some degree but light goes in all directions so it's not necessarily the same speed moving this way so there will be an impact of matter into molecules that are not moving with the exact same pattern of spin, if that makes sense. So, let's assume there's going to be an impact. Bang, 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 bang. It's pushing through this matter. Now, there's a right-hand rule where it, it does it nicely, like this. That's the right-hand rule. So this galaxy is going that way, because that is the right-hand rule. This is the right-hand rule. Energy goes that way. The field goes this way. Energy goes. In, in, in this direction, the same thing. The field goes reverse. But if that field goes reverse to this, if it went like this and still went that in direction, it's going to just, it's opposing itself. It's breaking itself. That's, there's a generator motor effect here. Um, I believe Walter Russell is the one you want to look to to see the magnetic interactions that are going to happen as this spins. It, the, these electrons, because everything's coated by electrons, there's no positives in the universe whatsoever that stick out. So all these negatives rub with all the other negatives. And that is what creates all these interactions and heat. And the closer they get into each other's regions, the more they display 
light. They give off light. And I believe I now understand the whole entire way the solar system works, and even the sun. The sun is rocket shipping through this ether. It's being scrubbed into heat. Let's take a look at that. Okay, there's not much need to spend too much time here. Everything that moves forward that has energy displays the right-hand rule in light and electricity. That, I'm saying, is no more than light and electricity we're looking at right here. The sun is glowing and particulating and sending off all of this bits of electrons and debris because it is smashing through the ether that is in front of it which is negative particles. It's headlong crashing into it at a bazillion miles an hour stripping off stuff. You see it coming off the left here? Watch as it comes back. You see that chunk coming off there? I didn't make this GIF but that is exactly what correct. That's the right hand rule. It goes this way. The Sun also is spinning this way along and I can show you that in the uh, it spins I don't know if you knew this but it does spin now the, the effect of that is that it's scrubbing its electrons against the electrons here and they're being ripped off exactly like you would expect they're scrubbing against scrubbing 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 and and ripping ripping and that's what you see right there we are collecting those electrons now what the sun runs into, the more density ahead of it, which I don't think we understand about the density in space, because it's not all completely the same. There is denser areas, like when comets come through, they may leave a bunch of particulates in the air. Um, who knows what kind of uh, radiation is coming through that will force more electrons off. But that is what is flowing against us and against our magnetic field because we are nothing more than electrons in a ball moving forward too. We're moving through those electrons that are crashing against us. Sometimes they're intense, sometimes not so intense. Alright, this is from Live Space. Does the Sun rotate? And the answer is yes. Uh, it takes 24 hours for Earth to make a full rotation. Since the Sun isn't solid object like a planet, its rotation harder to pinpoint. Since the Sun is a ball of gas plasma, it does not have it does not have to rotate rigidly like solid planets and moons do. In other words, underneath it rotates, and here I'll show it here. In fact, the gaseous sun is divided into different zones and layers with each of our host star regions moving at varying speeds. It's exactly what you would expect. It's, it's all so, so active on the outside, it's like a glowing ball of plasma. And inside, it's being ripped this way, and the plasma is drifting off and being torn. You see the way it spins? And it'll be going in that direction. That's the right-hand rule. Now, as it, it gets ripped off, as we saw in the other GIF, some things spin in different times. This spins in 25 days because it's being hit so hard going forward, it's spinning it like you'd go like this with a ball. And then we go fast, 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 faster. And the top is the gas is not connected to this. And that is not being ripped the way this is being ripped, so it spins slower. Every single thing makes sense. The, the interaction between the ether that this is plowing through excites this and the electrons so intensely that obviously they glow and they spin off and they swish and do all kinds of things and then they strip right out of there and then in, they are in open space and all luminescent bodies do that so they all strip into space they don't all hit us they go all over the place so they are everywhere so it's nothing that we have special here they're everywhere in the universe that is the nature of the universe. That is the nature of ether. And that is the nature of reality. So that is before you ever get anywhere in the universe, you've got to start there. And I have other things that are extremely, extremely hard for astrophysicists to get their hands around. It's Comic 67P, which is 100% organic. They know this. They just can't accept it. I have accepted it. I know what it is. I can explain every single detail and the chemistry. All right, 
this is a good video that talks about some of the anomalies that are on Uranus. Now, because it's cold, it's got extremely t extreme winds, uh, all kinds of things going on that are unusual. So, Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson. In this What Is video, we're going to explore the odd world of the planet Uranus. Uranus was named after the Greek god of the sky after its discovery in 1781. It's the seventh planet from the sun, making it one of the outer planets in the solar system. Uranus also has 13 very faint dark rings and 27 moons, most of which are named for Shakespearean characters. Uranus's diameter is 31,000 miles, almost four times that of Earth. Despite the size difference, Uranus's gravity is only 89% as strong. A person weighing 100 pounds of... I want to just mention something, and I think this is correct. The Earth is spinning this way. Okay, which means that's the right hand rule. Okay, it means electricity goes this way if the planet is heading in, the dire in that direction. Or, or the electricity goes this way if it's spinning this way. That's the right hand rule. This one is spinning backwards because it would be the right hand rule going this way, and it's not. It's, the, it's a left hand rule going the wrong direction. That's why these extreme interactions are happening between this one and also Venus. And I think it has to do with the rings and there's all, all bunch of stuff because they're all forced into ether. That's the thing they don't understand. On Earth, what way just 89 See, this is spinning backwards. Uranus. The atmosphere on Uranus is mostly hydrogen and helium with a small amount of methane and traces of water <laughs> and ammonia. Sunlight passes through the atmosphere and is reflected back out by Uranus's cloud tops. The methane gas absorbs the red portion of the light. I just want to say something about methane. Methane is, is biogases. Methane is biogases. That is organic flesh that decomposes and creates methane gases, hydrocarbons. That's what you burn in your cars. That's fossil fuel. It comes from that process. Now, they can say it came from somewhere else. Where? I'm not sure. But I know where it comes from on Earth. So let's go on. Giving it its bluish-green color. Like the other planets, Uranus has an elliptical orbit. On average, it is 1.8 billion miles from the Sun. And it takes 84 Earth years to complete one orbit. Uranus is unique among the planets because its axis lies nearly level with the path around the Sun causing it to appear to be rotating on its side. A day on Uranus takes a little over 17 Earth hours. One theory for Uranus's unique orientation is that a powerful collision with another celestial body knocked it off its original axis sometime during the formation of the universe. This, along with its 84-year-long orbit, causes Uranus's season to last over 20 years. The tilted axis also means its north and south poles alternate between direct sunlight and complete darkness. All right, this is also important because facing into the cloud of electrons, they have their poles. Normally you have the belly of the beast rotating this way, forcing its way through the cloud, creating a magnetic field around. This is stripping the magnetic field, really, it's stripping clouds of electrons away. Now there'll be obviously a difference between the south is your negative particles interacting. When you have the north it's going to be the other direction. So as this comes around the north will be facing the direction of movement. And at that point I would assume that the planet might even actually speed up a little bit. I don't know. I really I, these are things you, you know somebody could take a look at, but they're, they're very interesting interactions, and they do have consequences of cold. Every 42 years, the upper atmosphere of Uranus is the coldest in the solar system, with a minimum temperature of negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit, and the wind speeds on Uranus can reach an astounding 560 miles per hour. All right, that's I want to make one statement about hot and cold. That isn't even understood. Hot and cold is simply forcing electrons in is hot. Stripping electrons out is cold. 
that's all it is. And when that this is presenting itself in such a way that it's 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 being stripped of electrons, it's creating this intense cold. Sidewinding Uranus is the coldest planet in our solar system, even though it's not the furthest away from the sun. That honor goes to Neptune. Okay, another one from Monkey C. Let's just watch and see what Monkey sees. Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson. In this What Is video, we'll discover the real beauty of planet Venus. Venus is the second planet from the sun and the only planet named after a female, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Aside from the sun and the moon, it is the brightest object in our sky and can be viewed from... The brightest object, remember that. From Earth as both a morning and evening star. Because it's the closest planet to Earth and similar in size, Venus is considered our sister planet. Its gravity is similar as well. A 100 pound person on Earth would weigh only 90 pounds on Venus. Like the other inner planets, Venus is dense and rocky. Its surface is covered by smooth volcanic plains and it has relatively few impact craters indicating that the surface is geologically young. It's believed the planet experienced a global resurfacing event between 300 and 600 million years ago. Like its neighbor Mercury, Venus has no moons. The atmosphere on Venus is 92 times denser than Earth's and consists mainly of... All right, 92 times denser than Earth. Remember that. ...carbon dioxide and a small amount of nitrogen mixed with the sulfuric emissions from Venus's volcanoes. This creates two layers of dense sulfuric acid clouds that float above the surface of the planet. There appears to be no oxygen or water on Venus. Although all planets' orbits are elliptical, Venus's orbit is the most nearly circular. The time it takes Venus to orbit the... All right, nearly circular. All right, remember that. The sun is 225 Earth days. Venus also rotates on its axis very slowly. A single day on Venus takes 243 Earth days. Remember that. One day is 243 Earth days just to, just to turn around one time. It's also one of only two planets, along with Uranus, that rotate clockwise. That, that means if you were on Venus, the sun would rise in the west and set in the east. All right. Now... In the ether theory, which is not a theory, it's a fact, Venus is spinning backwards into that ether. It's not supposed to do that. That is counter to the reality of the universe. That is a reverse left-handed rule, which is a generator. What happens is it glows extremely bright because the interaction of the electrons forcing the other electrons to extremely become excited, spinning in this wrong direction. And it creates extreme amounts of heat. This thing's eight, over 800 degrees. Not only that, Velikovsky recorded, did extreme research on Venus and it is nowhere as near the age that they're talking about. And I'll go into that soon too. Although Mercury is closer to the Sun, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. Its dense atmosphere traps heat, leading to temperatures that can reach nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1962, NASA's Mariner 2 made Venus the first planet to be observed by a passing spacecraft. Since then, she has been slowly revealing her secrets to a steady stream of investigative missions. All right, hold on one second. All right, there's a lot of new research, and they did a death plunge into Venus, and they found out that's the hottest planet, like I said, almost 900 degrees. And what did they find out in the polar regions? I mean, it's a lot to this, but let me go, come right down here. Well, it says, what these results reveal is parts of Venus are much, much colder than expected. Average temperature on Venus makes it the hottest world in the solar system with a thick atmosphere trapping heat. Well, that's not the case. It's tra I'll talk about that. It's, it's trapping, well, it is trapping heat, they're right. It's trapping electrons because they're being forced in. 
uh, measurements taken by Venus Express at an altitude of 130 to 140 kilometers above the surface have revealed atmosphere near the poles has temperatures far below that on Earth. It's because it's spinning backwards. Now, uh, and I understand this thing very well now, I really do, I'm pretty sure. And then it goes on about another interesting finding was a polar region dominated by something known as at atmospheric gravity waves, which are tearing the the um, magnetic fields apart because they're going backwards instead of the correct direction. Don't be fooled by the name, though these are nothing to do with the more widely known gravitational waves. Instead, atmospheric gravity waves are ripples in the atmosphere that travel vertically from low to high. They're like forcing your waves against the other waves as the density decreases. We actually have some of these on Earth. They'll happen everywhere. Uh, Venus Express found there was atmospheric waves originated from the upper cloud layers, exactly where that would rub with the ether of Venus, about 90, well, 56 miles above the Earth's surface. In addition, larger scale waves caused by the planet's spin, which is backwards, as planetary waves were also found to be present. To make these findings, Venus Express was required to perform aerobraking maneuvers, and they tell how they did it and so forth. Uh, and then that, that's it. Now, let me show you something else about Venus. All right, I can explain this, too. Daylight apparitions. They f sometimes Venus will be completely like, look like a sun during the day. It'll look like a, just like it does at night during the day. So it says Venus during daylight hours, um, observations of Venus during daylight hours exist in several anecdotes and records. Well, I can tell you why they exist is because they, there was intensity radiation hitting that planet at that time. That's just enough to set it off because it's really glowing all the time anyway. Any excess sun activity in an extreme amount will probably illuminate it and it might have actually corresponded some some other events on earth like the historical daytime observation of planet took place during inauguration of president abraham lincoln on 4th march 1865 another naked eye visibility of venus phase is disputed but records exist of the observations of it's going to glow because it's already almost exploding with force into all the electrons that are just the ether. Now, when you start shooting additional electrons in, which is sunlight of some extreme nature, which we know that happens occasionally, that will illuminate the planet and they become visible. Now, here's the other thing that they claim, long-standing question, what about this ashen light? All right, I can understand that, too. I know what's going on there, too. It says, a long-standing mystery of Venus observation is the so-called ashen light. It's an apparent weak illumination of the dark side when the planet is in the crescent phase. The reason is, is because it's, again, all around the planet, it's rubbing through the electrons. That's what's making it glow. The more electrons, the more it glows. The place that's facing the sun is additionally being bombarded with electrons. The side that's not facing the sun is still being pushed through the electrons, but just not the intensity. It's just the difference between sunlight and daylight. I mean, uh, between daylight and the, the penumbra of the daylight, or whatever you want to call it. It's still rubbing very hard through the atmosphere of the ether in the ocean of the universe, and that is exciting those electrons, which because it's going backwards. That's why it lights up. So these things that when it says observers have speculated it may result from electrical activity in a Venusian atmosphere, and that is exactly correct. But it could be illusory results of a psychological <laughs> effect. You know, that's what they always come up with something psychological.